Hey church family and welcome to New Sound Online. We are honored that you decided to join us. We are believing that God has a special encounter for you that will leave you encouraged, challenged, and changed. And let me encourage you with this. Engage in this experience with us. Get up and worship. Amen the preacher. Leave us a comment in the chat box so we can chat with you. Intentionally tune your heart into what God has especially for you today, right where you're at. Hey, we love you so much. Come on, let's worship together.
much for joining us today. We have been praying for you and want to stay connected. So please take a moment to fill out our connect card by clicking the link below. You can also visit our website for prayer requests and to give online at newsoundnashville.com. Now let's enjoy the message. of our series entitled First Things First. And for the past two weeks, we've been diving into God's Word to see what Jesus has to say about our lives here on planet Earth. Two weeks ago, I spoke about our identity and what it means to live our lives built on the gospel. And last week, I spoke about our inheritance, what it means that we are citizens of another kingdom, that we have the backing and blessing of heaven in us and through us. And today, I'm so fired up to be speaking about destiny. We are called to be impact in this world for the glory of God and the good of creation. And I'm so excited for how this message can encourage you and equip you for the journey that God has called you to go on. So before we get any further, let's pray together and ask Jesus to speak to us this morning. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for the times that we have to gather around your word. Minister to us, Lord God. Lord, everyone that's watching this right now, God is in a different stage of life. Different things are going on in their world, Lord. They need to hear from you. God, I pray that you speak to each and every single one of us. God, that your love, God, would come and break down walls shatter down barriers, God, that's keeping us from experiencing you in a real and powerful way this morning. God, we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Alistair McIntyre, in his book, After Virtue, said an interesting quote. He says this, I can only answer the question, what am I to do, if I could answer the prior question of what story or stories do I find myself apart? Now, I don't know about you, um, but I've been in a situation where I've had to build something, whether like on Christmas for a, a Christmas gift for my kids or something that I got personally. And uh, you just have to wing it, you know? Like some people are instruction people. You know, they get out the instructions and all their tools and everything, and it's all neatly arranged. I'm not that guy, okay? I pull everything out of the box, just like my dad did, throw away the instructions, and I use the force. You know what I'm talking about. If it doesn't fit, you shove it in there, man. You get it in there. You try your best by using your intuition and your knowledge and your logic to just build that thing. I remember having to build a toy car that my kids got from China for one Christmas. And oh my gosh, it had so many parts and even the destructions didn't help at all. So I spent probably a good hour and a half using the force to make sure every piece fit in where it should be but I guess I didn't quite do it because that car had hydraulics. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It did not sit right for the remainder of the time that they had it. But if we're honest, if I'm being honest this morning, you know, before I became a Christian, my life was a lot like that. In fact, my life was a lot like this puzzle piece. You know, I didn't see myself as a part of a bigger story, a bigger picture that was being told. So I just tried to force myself into situations, into relationships, friendships, career choices, value systems, just to see if they would fit. You know, and if I'm honest, it was quite a tiring exercise. Because whenever I force myself into those situations or values or relationships or career choice or whatever it was, 
I never quite found the beauty, the lasting joy, and effectiveness that I thought I would have. And then I found that God was somehow using those experiences to lead me to a place where I could start to see myself and my story as a part of a grand story. You know, that's one of the things that I feel that God is requiring for all of us. That God is trying to help us see that the way that we've been going isn't the way that He intends. In fact, God wants to do a new thing, and one of the things that requires from us is that we acknowledge that the way we've been going isn't the right way. And that if we want to go on the path of the new thing that God has for us, we have to give up our old way. Listen to what Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 9 says. It says, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work and those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It has been by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. In order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. There's a crucial question that we all must answer. We must ask ourselves, before we can live out our destiny, what story do you find yourself a part? Or another way we could say that is, who is at the center of the story? Here's the hard truth according to the Bible. All of us lived gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. See, when God is not the center of our lives, then we are. We sit on the throne of our heart. We make the decisions. And as the Bible clearly says, we gratify the cravings of our flesh and follow its desires and thoughts. And because of that, we are, by our very nature, deserving of wrath. But if we're being honest, and if I'm being honest, even when we're living in that state of gratification, even when we're living in that state of, of complete and total, like us being at the center of our own story, we still feel moments of despair. We still feel moments of loneliness. And sometimes when we're confronted with our sin and our selfishness, we truly to begin to understand just the beginning of our great need. We're needy. We're in desperate need. What are we in need of? We're in need of the love of God. We need the author of life. We need the author of life to rewrite our life. And as we acknowledge our great need for God, He is so quick to shower grace and mercy on us. That's what this verse says, that He is looking to give us grace and mercy and to make us alive in Christ. Because when we give our lives to Him, we actually discover the very life He created us to live. And it's at that moment when we have seen Christ 
for who as he truly is, we see ourselves for who we truly are. And here's another beautiful part that Paul says right here in this verse, is it says that God raises us up and seats us with him in the heavenly realms. Think about that for a minute. There is nowhere higher for us to climb. No achievement greater for us to achieve. No crowd to impress. No resume to build or establish. Here's the most important thing you need to hear about your divine destiny. Your divine destiny is to be with a person. And his name is Jesus. That is our primary calling as human beings. To, to a sustained relationship with God that starts here on earth but goes into eternity. And if you hear the word salvation or saved in church, that's what we mean. We mean that to be in a radically loving and transforming relationship with Jesus Christ. That is the foundation and bedrock of our divine destiny. To be in a relationship with God and to be changed by His grace. I love the image we actually get of this in Matthew chapter 17 verses 1 through 8. It says this, After six days Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Oh, I love that. Lord, it is good for us to be here. It is good to be with Jesus. He is good. God is pure goodness. And so that's why the biblical invitation to us is taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. I just imagine Peter standing there in the awe of the presence of Jesus and just his glory resting upon him as the Bible says he shone like the sun and he just, the, the immediate response of him is, man, this is good. It's good that we're here with you, Jesus. That's what Jesus wants for all of us. And I love that the Bible puts it so clear out there. Just taste and see. Just experience him, him for yourself. Just grab hold of God who offers himself to you and see what happens. Once you have nurtured and responded to God's call of a relationship with him, an ongoing one, see that gracious gift of salvation leads us to a gracious response. I like to say it this way. Obedience is the natural overflow of a transformed life. See, once I gave my life to Jesus, I loved to do the things that blessed his heart. I loved to do the things that brought him joy because he had graced me with such a newfound purpose, with a forgiveness for all my sins, with the removal of all my shame. It was such a freeing experience that has literally lasted a lifetime for me as, as I continue in this relationship and it's such a joy to be able to obey him so the bible says that in ephesians 2 10 that we are his workmanship created in christ jesus for good works which god prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them see we can get hung up on this whole good works and and we can try to make them into like an external list to add to christianity and but I think really that downplays what God is saying here. See, the good works are not simply the good moral behavior, though that's important. God wants us to be fruitful. God wants us to be innovative. God wants us to be creative. See, the original words here in Greek tells us that we are God's poema. We are God's poem. We are God's 
artwork. Another translation of the same verse says that we are God's masterpiece. Isn't that beautiful? See, living out our destiny is about being in harmony. Being in harmony with the gifts and call that God has placed inside of each and every one of us. See, it's less like a box that we need to check and a list that we need to go off and and complete our good works for the day and more like being in tune with the melody that he sang over our lives. See, many times I speak with people who are in various professions. Maybe they're a barista. Maybe they're a, a, a salesperson. Wherever they work, it doesn't matter. And they feel like they always come to me with this question, like what they're doing may be keeping them from the thing that God has called them to do. And they feel like they're not fulfilling their full potential. But the Bible actually turns this around and it reveals that the way that God operates in the world is precisely through your way of life. See, when we live out the gifts that God has placed inside of each and every one of us, God's glory is displayed. His work of art is being showcased to the world. His poem is being released. See, that's the beauty about your destiny with God is once you've come into a relationship with Him, it's really about just getting in harmony with the gifts and call that He's really placed inside of you. So you may be asking me, Pastor, well, how do I figure that out? How do I find and know God's plan for this work of art? How do I know that? Well, one of the great truths of the Christian faith is that each human being is fearfully and wonderfully made. When God shaped you in the womb, he did that uniquely, and he did that so that you could be useful. See, Psalm 139, verse 13 says it this way, You made all the delicate inner parts of my body. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Psalm 139, 16, You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. See, God shapes every human life. He places within you not just your DNA, but your talents, your propensities, and your gifts. He places that in you since before you were even born. It's a beautiful thing. God designed you this way. I love how Max Lucado says it. God designed you, and his design defines your destiny. It's already in you. It's been in you since before you were born. And listen to this, every day of your life has been recorded in his book. Every single moment. And so now a key question that we might want to explore and you might want to explore in the time to come is what gifts, what talents, what propensities has God given you? And if you're searching for a career, that might be something that you really want to consider and the careers that you're feeling drawn to. Maybe this is something that you can ask a trusted friend or a mentor about and begin to sharpen and begin some clarity around those things. And those. And what I found is that God wants to do a new thing through his people always. What he needs to get past is our limited perspective. Sometimes I hear people say, oh, I could never speak in front of people. Or, oh, I could never share my writing in public. Oh, or I could never use this creative talent, whether it be painting or, or dancing or whatever it is that you did maybe years and years ago, but have put down and now don't feel qualified to pick it back up again. And I always like to lovingly challenge them and say, so what you're saying is God can't use that thing in your life anymore? God can't give you that creative talent again. God can't do a new thing. See, it's a beautiful thing when we begin to get our eyes off of our view, of our puzzle piece, and see ourselves through the grand story that God is telling. You find that impossible is nothing to Him. I want to give you some practical help and some guidelines that I give 
to anyone who's trying to discern either a call to ministry or any vocation, really. Here's what I would recommend. Number one is this. To discern your destiny, you need to be in the Bible. You need to soak yourself in the Word of God and let it fill your mind and heart much more than you actually ever even imagined. Let that sink deep into you as God reveals to you some clear revelation. See, you begin to adjust your life to the revelation that God brings. It's a powerful thing. Secondly, you need to commune with the Holy Spirit through prayer. See, God is always speaking. What we need to do is practice hearing. Practice hearing what His voice is saying to you. Practice praying what His heart is for the world. Through the Bible and through prayer, it'll help you a lot. Number three is this, the local community of believers. See, God sends people into your life to confirm your calling. It's happened to me time and time again. I find that God's delivery system is people. He loves to use his people. God uses his people to solidify callings in your life. And he uses them also to save you from running headfirst into a calling that may not be actually yours. You may just be really excited about something. And you need people to kind of keep you anchored and to lead you away from pain uh, from choosing that for yourself when they clearly can see, hey, you've got some gifts and callings in some other areas. And hey, that area ain't one of them. <laughs> Here's another one that I found so powerful in my life. Listening to the cries of pain in the world. You know, Jesus in Matthew 25 says something very interesting. He said that when you visited someone in jail, when you took care of the sick or the poor, when you went to the deepest places of pain in this world and you served and you listened, you were actually meeting with Jesus. Isn't that powerful? That we don't even realize that we're doing that. When we meet these deep needs of pain, we're actually where God is at work. And God can speak to you in those moments. He's done it to me time and time again and shaped my life. And finally, the gifts that lie within oneself. As I shared before, God created each person to be unique, fearfully and wonderfully made, knitted together in your mother's womb. And during that process, God not only gave you personal gifts, He not only gave you a personality and, and propensities and talents and abilities, but at the same time, He was also creating for you spiritual gifts. There's a whole list of them in the Bible, several that I would encourage you to look at. God has graced each and every one of us with not only personal talents, qualities, abilities, and propensities, but he's also given each of us spiritual gifts through the empowering and filling of the Holy Spirit. You must look within to see what God has given you. Ask God for clarity and revelation on what those things are. Chances are you already use them without even acknowledging the power that's behind them. See, this is the way we get to know who we are and what we're called to be through scripture, through prayer, through the community of believers, through listening to the cries of pain in the world, and through looking deep within, seeing where God has placed things within you. Friend, I believe so much in your destiny. And my heart as a pastor is to do whatever I can to help you get to it. And my prayer is this, is that as you've heard my sharing this message today, and maybe you thought to yourself, you know, Pastor, I don't think I've given my life to Jesus fully. In fact, I kind of forced myself into a lot of situations. I'm still trying to figure out where I fit. And today, I just want to surrender to the grand storyteller, to the author of life, to the creator, to the Lord Jesus Christ, who loved me and gave himself for me. If that's you, I want to invite you to pray with me. See, I'll give you the words, but you give them the meaning. And I know God 
according to his word, is rich in mercy and love, will shower you with those and will make you alive in Christ. Pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, here is my life. I give it to you. Cleanse me of my sin. Remove all guilt and shame. Help me to begin a relationship with you that changes me from the inside out. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, if you prayed that prayer, I'm so proud of you. Welcome to the family of God. Please let us know how we can continue to serve you on your journey by filling out a connect card at the link provided or even requesting prayer or even shooting us an email. However, we want to stay connected with you and encourage you on your journey. And for my other friends who are in a discerning season right now, let me encourage you to use those practical considerations that I gave you to theologically reflect on the fact that you are God's poem in and for the world. You are his work of art. God is calling you right now to get creative, to get innovative, to awaken some of those old giftings and passions that you've placed on the shelf and thought, man, I can't even use those anymore. The time has passed for me to use those. No, that's not so. God can do a new thing in your life, in and through you. And I believe he wants to do for such a time as this. See, the beautiful thing about God is that none of us can accurately reflect him alone. We need community. As we gather together, we reflect the glory and the multifaceted nature that is our God. When I see a brother or a sister practice hospitality or speak or teach or preach or encourage or whatever it is that God gifted them to do, I see more of Him and I see more of His goodness and glory being shown in the world. That's why we need you. We need you desperately to get off the sidelines and into the game. You are God's poem, His work of art in and for the world. And what that does is remind all creation what a glorious, glorious place it actually is. I love you so much. I'm proud of you. Continue on in your faith. We're going to sing a song right now. And we're going to use music as a platform to connect with the living God. Ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Ask Him to reveal to you giftings, callings, talents, whatever it is that you're seeking clarity for. So that God can move you closer into harmony with the destiny He has marked out for you.
couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Stay connected to all that is happening at New Sound Church by visiting our website at www.newsoundnashville.com and also by following us on Facebook and Instagram at New Sound Nash. Most importantly, go and tell all people about this new life in Jesus Christ.